And let's bring in Joey Alfieri now. Week three in the CFL opens Thursday night with the Red Blacks at the Montreal Alouettes. Les Alouettes have, uh, what's your home opener, Joey? The best team in the CFL. Have you got your rings yet? What's exciting about Thursday night at McGill? Yeah, yeah, Roddy. Thanks uh, for having me, first of all. Uh, yeah, I mean, the rings have already come in. Uh, we did get our rings, uh, it was the day before training camp, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but it's the raising of the banner now, right? The eighth uh, championship banner in the stadium. Uh, so there's definitely that to look forward to. And it's always intense when Montreal and Ottawa play, right? So uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be fun. But just being in front of the home crowd for the first time since... Uh, I mean, if you don't count the preseason, it's the first time since the beginning of November. So it's been quite a while. How's ticket sales? Really good, really good. Yeah, I know that uh, late last week they announced that they were over 20,000 capacities, a little over 23, I think. Uh, so, uh, so it's gone really, really well. People are really excited. And we don't just see it in ticket sales. I think, you know, we've seen it in TV ratings here locally. Uh, we've seen it in radio ratings as well. We've seen it in social media i mean our numbers are are just through the roof like they're you know it's not comparable to anything the franchise has seen before so you know winning the great cup it goes a long way i like to think that the marketing people are doing a really nice job here but you know let's not kid ourselves you know <laughs> danny machocha jason moss cody Pajardo, and those guys uh that are uh, that are really driving things and i can tell you roddy it's like it's just it's become cool again uh to follow the montreal otherwise there's a couple of years where you know, was uh, they had some down years here. Uh, they were, you know, three and fifteen at one point. They were five and thirteen, and now it's like, you know, people are slowly starting to pile on the bandwagon, and it's a lot of fun. We've got that momentum going, and hopefully, they can keep it rocking. Well, I mean this in all sincerity. All markets across the CFL are great to attend a game. All stadiums are awesome. But I mean, if there's one, if you died without going to a game in Montreal, you would <laughs> die incomplete. And I say that in all sincerity, man, because there's nothing like it. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, it, look, it's a place where, you know, I, even before I, I started working here, I mean, you know, I've had season tickets in my family for, uh, you know, almost since, uh, since day one of the, uh, of the return to Montreal, a couple of years into their return. But, you know, so it's, uh, you know, my family's been supporting for a while, so it has nothing to do with me working here. I love being there. I grew up there. Uh, there's, there's no view, you know, whether you're, if you sit on the south side, you have the view of the mountain and the cross on the mountain. If you sit on the north side, you have the Montreal skyline. So you really can't lose. Uh, but, uh, look, I've done every stadium in the CFL officially uh, last year. I did the last one. I went to BC. There's, you know, everybody has, uh, you know, everybody has some great and unique things about their respective barns. I think Montreal goes head to head against any one of them. I think the game day experience is, uh, is uh, is unmatched. Uh, there's no bad seat in the place, and uh, and you've got the views uh, to match it. If you want to, you know, if you if you get distracted, you want to gaze uh, into the sun. You have some nice views there too. So uh, that definitely doesn't hurt. Yeah, well, and that's uh, and the best thing is the team's winning now. And I I'll keep this quick, but I could talk to you forever. What we got about five minutes to do this, Joey and I. Because I, I, have a, I have a lot of questions for you, but Cody Fajardo has said that you guys are better than last year. And um, Cody, don't brag. <laughs> I know him very well. He wouldn't say that if he didn't believe it. Are you better than last year? Yeah. Well, I think you have to, you know, obviously when you finish the season on an eight-game winning streak, you annihilate Toronto in the East Final, uh, and then you end up winning the Grey Cup. You know, I mean, that's a pretty darn good team. I think what they're saying is, or what Cody's saying is, that, you know, at this time last year, everybody's getting to know each other. Uh, you know, everyone's trying to get the playbook down. So I think at the same time last year, they're a better team. There's no doubt about it. I think they're, they're a lot more uh, in sync. Um, you know, down the stretch remains to be seen. We'll see what happens. But if they're this good now, and look, adversity always strikes. I mean, you've been following the league for a long time, Roddy. You know how it is. An 18-game season, there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. To me, um, you said it. You know, Cody doesn't say things for no reason. Um, but I, I'm, I'm with him. I think this is a team that is better. Uh, it's rare that you get most of your core back from a great cup team. There have been some changes here and there. Uh, but even the young guys that have come in have, have really stepped up early on. So um, I'm with Cody. I do think that this is a better team. And I think that at the same time, you know, at this point last year, they're ahead of where they were. So I'm hoping that by the end of the season, I don't know how much more ahead you can get of a great cup winning team. Maybe you win the great cup by 50. Uh, but I'm hoping that it stays on that track would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a Montreal BC Grey Cup in BC, so hold me to that, please. 
But just yeah. but to, to back it up, big picture, because you're working in it, your day to day in the front in the trenches, and I've been there. I don't want to be that anymore. That's why I'm sitting here. I can just sit back and look over everything, the whole league, and I see Danny come in and just do a, a rebuild in a year. Who does that? I mean, Trustman and Pop did it in 2017 with the Argos, but they had Ricky Ray. You guys didn't even have a entrenched quarterback. You had to go out and sign Cody. So, I, like, how would you say they did it? Well, look, I think the, obviously, you know, Rod, first of all, you, you, you took the big money move. Like, you're making the big money now, so let's just get that out of the way, first of all, okay? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. I see how it is. Oh, I look, when, I, when I'm older, when I'm older, I want to be like you. I keep telling people. Um, but on the, seriously, on a more serious note, uh, obviously, you have to sign the right players. So you have, to, you have to be confident in your scouting in and out of the league. Um, but the other thing is, and I know that, you know, people on the outside, they kind of roll their eyes at this sometimes, but they built a culture here. They built it. It took some time. It took about half a season, but you know, from ownership on down through, you know, president, general manager, and head coach, uh, those guys helped build the culture here. And this is a really tight knit group. And I know everybody says that, but Rod, you go in this locker room downstairs and you have uh, defensive backs playing ping pong against. Uh, a defensive lineman or an offensive lineman. Uh, you have guys, I've never seen a team, uh, different portions and position groups of a team come together and, and, and really be one and hang out. And it, I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. Like, it's crazy how tight knit this group is. And I feel like, yes, talent is a big part of it. They signed the right players, they brought in the right guys, they had some really good mid season acquisitions like Lemon and Sankey, and that all helped. But the culture that Danny and Jason and everyone above them have built, um, you know, just on the way here is really special to watch. And I think it's a big reason why they had that success. And that's how you do it. I don't know how you do a rebuild in one year, but they figured out a way. Yeah, well, for sure. I don't know Danny well. We both were in the league a long time. What I, what I know of him, I like. But I know Moz and I know Cody. And if he's like them and he put them in place, that kind of tells me what you're saying good people right and you're in that group yeah. and uh and i and I, are the fans figured that out yet they must yeah 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 they did i i think that like i said you know people have taken a liking to this group um you know also you know we've taken uh the fan you know behind the scenes into the locker room you know they get to see uh jason moss pre-game post-game speeches they get to see the the captains address the team and not i think it's impossible to not get chills uh when you hear uh, some of the things, especially down the stretch last year, when you hear some of the things that are said in the locker room, you know, Alex Gagne, who's a former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, has become, you know, an integral part of the the special teams and of the locker room, the fabric of the locker room here. I mean, he had, uh, uh, I, I'd invite people to go see it, even if you're not an Alouettes fan, it's on YouTube, before the East Final. Um, I mean, you, you're the, the arms, the, the, sorry, the hair on your arms will stand up. Uh, when you watch stuff like that. So I think people have figured out that it's a big time culture thing. Yes, there's a lot of players to love. There's some talented people here, no doubt about that. But man, I'm just telling you what they built from a culture standpoint here. I mean, they should, they should write a textbook on it because there's a lot of teams in a lot of sports that have been searching for, you know, an identity and for culture building that they could learn a thing or two from the people that are in place here. Let me just tell you that. Let me put it that way. Oh yeah. Well, Gagne, he's a good one. And I'll just say, yeah. Flip, flip you, just watch. Thank you, Joey. I'll be watching tomorrow night. I'll be watching tomorrow night. Thanks for fitting us in, man. Bon chance. Hey, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Roddy. The great Joey Alfieri of MontrealAlouettes.com.